Hey guys, it's Mr. Bison. I thought I would just give you my reactions to paper two for the Edexcel A-Level Maths that was just sat today. Now, I've just done a poll on my channel and about 60 to 65% of people said that they preferred paper two to paper one. And I probably agree with that on the whole. And I'm trying to think about why that might be true. Well, one of the reasons I think is about timing because we knew there were gonna be 16 questions in this paper because there were 16 bullet points. I think that meant that people had a bit of time to think about how they were gonna do an exam that had 16 questions in. So maybe that's affected the way that people have felt about the papers and plus they've already got one under their belt so they're in a better flow with things. I would also say that the advanced information gave better clues in this paper. I think that they had some things like that were quite specific, like differential equations with partial fractions. They had things like geometric series with trigonometry. And so if you did any of the predicted papers that were floating around, you probably would have done some practice of things that were really similar, so kind of sharpened up those skills. So I think that was really smart. Um, I think that some of the questions were also a little bit less fiddly. There were some things that just felt a lot more straightforward, things like the differentiation from first principles being a really easy function. And there were some questions that felt a little bit more similar to previous years. So people were perhaps feeling a bit more prepared with those things. But of course, there were some things that definitely tripped people up. There was like the Ferris wheel qu question, which I know people didn't like so much. And the, the second half of the vectors question, maybe some people couldn't do as well. But these weren't huge questions. They were only sort of three or four marks. So they shouldn't have too much of an impact impact on your overall paper. Now this doesn't mean that because paper one I think was uh, paper two was a little bit easier than paper one that it means that it was easier. It's just my take on it and you might have different strengths to what my students have as well. It really is just down to individual choice so don't worry if you feel like you're on sort of the other side of which ones people think were easier. It really doesn't matter on the whole. Will this affect grade boundaries? Yes, I think it probably is a slightly easier paper, so that will be bringing the grade boundaries up a little bit, but it wasn't so much easier than paper one. I also think it's really good if an exam series has a mixture of things that are challenging, things are a little bit easier, so that you have a really well-rounded experience of doing the exams. So I wouldn't worry too much about the grade boundaries because I think they're likely to stick roughly at what I'd suggested before around the 2019 mark. Um, well, what about next? What should you be doing? Well, paper three is all applied stuff, so you don't need to worry about any of that stuff with Pure anymore. And I think the advanced information for paper three is a little bit harder to digest. It seems really to just have absolutely everything that's there. But some things that's worth noting that a few people have asked me about is the large data set. Is that going to be included? Yes, it is definitely going to be included. It's probably only going to be two or three marks, though, so it's probably not worth spending loads of time on. I would focus on the bigger topics of things like moments or the normal distribution, because we know for sure that they are going to come up. Anyway, I'm wishing you the absolute best of luck with your third paper, and let's see how that goes. Good luck!